Fourth Street in Berkeley. Do you know it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of like the modern day Garden of Eden. When you're there, you can pretend that your whole life is brunch. <laughs> and we have everything that you need there. A benefit, a bare minerals, a Sephora, and a Mac. <laughs> There's trees and birds and an apple store. <laughs> and a snake shop. I work right next door to the snake shop. I sell jewelry. Engagement rings. And Adam... Well, I'm sure he's on his way. <laughs> Let's see if we can get Eve on the line. Just tap into that ancient grief pain. <coughs> oh, God. And um, pull that uh, infinite umbilical cord tight. <sighs> Hello? Hello, Eve? Can't hear anything. She's very old. <laughs> I mean, archetypal. <laughs> <laughs> She's really more metaphor than mammal. More closely related to an angel. He was innocent. I mean, she overheard God telling Adam not to go near that tree or to touch that fruit, but. She didn't really know those voices speaking to her in the garden. All she knew was beauty and desire. She just wanted to be close to that beauty, to, to touch and smell and taste it. So she did. And then everything changed. The sky grew dark, the clouds rolled in, the animals bared their teeth, and the pain. Eve was the very first person ever to be gaslit. <laughs> the first to be shamed and blamed, the first to be punished. But that's not how I like to think about Eve. I like to think about Eve like the first person ever to make up her own mind. Mm -hmm. The first person to have a goal. The first person to achieve that goal. The first to feel desire. The first to follow that desire. And Eve was also the first to feel separate. Feeling separate from everything. That's what's been smoothed over and renamed sin. Mm -hmm. And being separate does cause suffering. But Think of how hard it is for us today to remember that we're connected to everything and just see how far we apples have fallen from that tree. <coughs> I spent my summers growing up in Ireland, the West Coast, County Clare. And no, I can't do the accent any justice, so stop asking for fuck's sake! <laughs> Ireland is impossibly green. It's even greener than you imagine. There's no stopping the life force there. Life is just bursting out of the fields and crashing through the walls and coming up through the roads. I think Ireland is my mom's Garden of Eden. Even now, years after Dad died and she sold that County Clare house, she loves going back just to be there. And when my mom goes to Ireland, I follow her into the green. And it's true, there aren't any snakes in Ireland. That's true. But that part about St. Patrick driving them out, that's just a legend. There never were any snakes in Ireland. <laughs> and you know what else there never was any of in Ireland? The Roman Empire. No. They took a look and said, pass. <laughs> that's why you can still feel those pagan roots all over the, ir uh, all over the island. You've got those ancient burial grounds marked with stones and stone circle forts, and the Celtic cross just crawling with those snake-like knots. Christianity was the light that drove out the darkness, snakes, a symbol of evil. Sometimes on my break from work on Fourth Street, I like to go next door to the snake, sh the snake shop and just see what they're up to. <laughs> Most of the time, they're all curled up, 
digesting. <laughs> but every once in a while, I'll lock eyes with one of them. I think you got a bad rap. You're actually kind of cute. You're not evil. No more evil than darkness is evil. No more evil than mystery is evil. Speaking of mystery, they, they took a photograph of a, a black hole. And it's not a hole, it's not nothing. Black holes are a whole lot of something. It's just the stuff around it, which is mostly nothing, just can't bear it. And we just can't bear not to be able to see things. If we can't see things, we can't understand them. If we can't understand them, then they must be evil, right? Wrong. How could you be evil? You're here, part of creation, as much as I am. You're just a whole lot more yin than what people are used to. Dark, mystery, creative void, pregnant pause. Is that how it happens? We just sit in the dark, listening, receptive, open. Is that how we smash the patriarchy? <laughs> Could it really be that simple? Yin and yang? Adam was yang. He had a little seed of yin in him, his rib that he gave to Eve. She was yin, and she needed a little bit of yang in her, so she took a bite of apple. And that's how they became balanced and conscious, and they chose to walk out of the Garden of Eden and be humans in the world. Could it really be that simple? No one speaks Sanskrit anymore. <laughs> <laughs> what? No one speaks snake anymore. <laughs> Did I say something funny? You are funny. <laughs> You're hysterical. <laughs> I'm crazy. <laughs> I'm crazy. I never said that. But I'm used to being accused of saying all kinds of things. What's the truth? The truth is, I am transformation. I am kundalini rising. I am an aphrodisiac. I'm wrapped around your doctor's staff of Hermes-like DNA. Evil? I am life. If you want to think of your life as a curse, well, that's on you. I didn't do what women are supposed to do. I didn't get married. I didn't have kids. I didn't keep pretending to love that job where you're timed on how fast you return emails because that's what work means now. <laughs> I started listening to a different voice, a voice that says, write, pray, breathe, meditate, work with your hands, and write. Travel, see your friends in person, see theater, and write. You don't have any more time to write anyone else's story. You have exactly the right amount of time to tell your entire story, starting right now. And as my eggs run low, my body kind of freaks out every month, but my brain is getting really relaxed. It's like there aren't any penises within a 10 meter radius of me on any given day, so every month my body kind of throws a tantrum, but my brain 
kind of checks out and does this philosophical bypass, like, hey, perimenopause. <laughs> Pretty cool. No one ever talks about this, so it must be sacred. <laughs> Pay attention, we're transforming again. <laughs> this ovary, this is the one that's responsible for migraines and back pains. Thanks. This one, this is the one that decided to give me a period two weeks early in Ireland. This is the emotional one, the one where I don't know anymore. <laughs> under a tree, listening to the birds. And then a car door slams hard in the parking lot. A woman gets out on her cell phone. You fucking liar! How could you do this to me? I hope you die! And I want to tell her I know exactly how she's feeling. Yeah, I'm... I want to go to her and hug her and let her know it's okay to cry. I want to suggest kickboxing. <laughs> Maybe get a whole bunch of plates specifically for smashing in my friend's basement. <laughs> I want to tell her that if she feels she needs to burn her whole life to the ground and move across the country to Annapolis, Maryland, because maybe then she'll stop wanting to kill herself, she should try that. <laughs> and then when the feeling doesn't go away, she can always move back here and start her life all over again. She can change. She can do it differently. She can do better. So much better. She can get a job on 4th Street selling jewelry. <laughs> and then when she sees him one day, because for some reason he works right across the street from her, <laughs> she can realize that she feels nothing but gratitude for everything that happened. She can feel so good about her life now that she can wish him nothing but the best. But she gets back into her car and slams the door and zips away from 4th Street. It takes a minute for the birds to start chirping again. On this last trip to Ireland with my mom, she took me to a park I'd never been to before. And while she sat and smoked her cigarettes, I walked around the park by myself in no fear of snakes. Snakes are beautiful. Maybe that's why we're drawn to them. Maybe it's my kundalini life force that's just recognizing their life force that lets me talk to them, lets me understand them. And cats, and fires, and shooting stars. Inside the park, there's a garden, a walled garden. And along one side of the wall, there's all these roses, red and white. The jackdaws call to each other overhead. Huh. A ginkgo tree, my dad's favorite kind. Adam was made in the image of the creator. Um, there was so much creating in that opening opus. The sky and firmament, land and sea, flora and fauna, and a, a human. A human basically split in two, masculine, feminine, yin, yang. The masculine, go, 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 do, 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 drive, 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 sex, sex, sex. And the feminine, the listening, the mystery, the receptive, the rest, the part drawn to snakes and apples. In the middle of the garden, there's a huge copper beech tree 
It, it must be 50 meters tall with boughs that reach all the way to the ground. And as I take the path up to the tree, I duck between the branches, and I see the trunk is surrounded by a huge wrought iron fence with spikes. Oh, there's a sign. It says, this is the autograph tree. It's been initialed by a lot of famous Irish writers, Sean O'Casey, W.B. Yeats, George Bernard Shaw. And they don't want any of these new autographs to wreck the old initials, so that's why the fence. A forbidden tree. <laughs> I know what I want to do. <laughs> Walk away from the trunk to find something sharp, a rock. And now all I need is to find one of the boughs close to the ground. It's flat and smooth, maybe like this right here, perfect. Wait a second. S, A, it can't be. E, what? What does it mean? What does it mean? You want me to, to write, follow desire and beauty? You want me to, to listen, receive, and believe? Ow! Ow! <laughs> <laughs>